Hello and welcome to the third introductory video about challenge-based learning. In this video, we will briefly cover the role of input, reflection and assessment in CPL. You will also find out what the benefits but also the drawbacks of using this approach are. Three short examples will give you an idea of how CPL can be integrated into higher education. If you want to learn more about the definition, origin and precursors of CBL, please watch my first video. Watch my second video for an overview of the learning process in CBL. Input in CBL can take different forms and depends on the group of students, their background and the knowledge and experiences they are expected to have to be able to enter into the challenge process. As a coach, the teacher's role is to identify, possibly short notice, which material and input they can provide the students with to support them. In addition to supporting lectures by teachers, talks by or questioning time with experts on topics central to the challenge can be fruitful resources for students. Especially in interdisciplinary groups, students might have different knowledge levels of the topic to be dealt with. One way to allow for a leveling of knowledge is to integrate material from a MOOC, that is a massive open online course, into the challenge-based learning experience. This way, students can flexibly explore basic or specific knowledge within a given time frame. One instrument that helps teachers identify how to support students on their learning journey is student reflection. Reflection has a central role in CPL. Students document and reflect their individual and group learning processes throughout all phases of CPL, that is, engage, investigate and act. By documenting and reflecting individual learning, students can explore and deepen their understanding, evaluate their learning strategies and see their progress. Reflection on group processes can help with communication and collaboration. For the teacher, both are important sources of insights into where the students are and how to support them on their learning journey. Reflection can at the same time serve as a means of assessment of learning. Let us take a look at the intended learning outcomes and assessment in CBL. By working on a challenge in teams, Students can acquire both knowledge and competences. Students develop in-depth knowledge of the challenge and can develop disciplinary and transversal competences, such as collaboration, communication, problem solving or critical thinking. This means that assessment in CBL does not only need to be tailored to assessing both knowledge and competence development, but also needs to support the central role the learning process has in CBL. A combination of formative and summative assessment meets these requirements. Formative assessment, that is, assessment for learning, supports the learning process, helps to see where the students are and how to help them move on in their learning journey. Summative assessment, the assessment of learning, is used to assess the learning outcome, the solution to the challenge and artifacts created by the students. Please watch Yogita Witzgerdaitis' videos for an in-depth discussion of assessment in CBL. Now that you have a first idea of what CBL entails, you might already have identified what the benefits and drawbacks of this approach to teaching and learning are. With transversal competences becoming increasingly important in the world of work, competence development is one of the benefits of CBL. An additional benefit is the participatory character of the approach and students' active role, which empowers them to take charge of their learning. CBL is also a meaningful approach for learning in interdisciplinary groups of students and in supradisciplinary programs, modules and projects. If stakeholders are involved, the foundation for fruitful long-lasting partnerships can be laid. Even though challenge-based learning is a promising approach, it also has its drawbacks. 
The role of the teacher is a demanding one and requires flexibility in the course design and guidance. The more choice the learners are allowed, the more flexible the teacher has to be. In terms of resources, establishing collaborations with or involving stakeholders from outside the university can be challenging. As with other active methods, there's also the risk that, quote, engagement can be mistaken for learning, unquote. Which is why formative assessment and the reflection as well as documentation of learning is crucial within CBL. Last but not least, let us look at examples of how CBL can be integrated into higher education. In this setting, CBL can function as the underlying teaching and learning approach of a course, but also be integrated on the level of a degree program, a whole university or into projects run by several higher education institutions together. On the level of a university course, an example is my own course on artificial intelligence at the University of Graz. In this one semester free elective, students from different disciplines form teams to work on a challenge of their choice in the area of artificial intelligence. The Technological de Monterey is an example of a university which has adopted and adapted CBL into its educational model Tech21. In the course of their studies, students from different fields of studies work together on a challenge for a week, called an I-week, or over the course of a semester in an I-semester. The Arcus University Alliance, an alliance between nine European universities as of February 2022, is an example of CBL integrated into a supra-university project. In Arcus, challenge-based learning is practiced in the form of a collaborative program. Within this program, students from the partner universities come together to work on 21st century challenges, such as climate change or diversity.